Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your spring equinox reading. I've only got three piles here, pile one, pile two, and pile three. And that's because I feel like in this equinox, we're all kind of going through the same thing. Obviously, we're all isolated and we're all a little anxious and we're really having our lives disrupted. We're each going to work through that in our own ways, but the underlying theme of the equinox to me is really this process of cocooning up, individuating, slowing down, taking stock, and getting really ready for everything to come back to life. Personally, I'm not feeling too bad about all of this. Um, I'm doing okay where I'm at, and I'm really hopeful about Aries season bringing this like download of vitality and health. So I don't want to talk too much more about the general trend. I think we all kind of know where we're at. So let's get to your readings. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. I'm happy to see that I don't think you guys are too affected by current world events. Your spread here really speaks to me more of an internal, spiritual, and personal growth process. You start off with the fool, so you had some kind of new beginning. You were you had a fresh slate. You were going embarking on your hero's journey. You had the world all before you, and here and you were embarking on your journey with your lover. Some of you, this was uh, or you know is your your soulmate or your twin flame or just you know your soul family. For others of you, it'll be your internal alignment of aligning with yourself, your higher self, all of the aspects of your sub uh, subconscious, you are feeling like the fool and the lovers to start this spread. So awesome. You were like, yeah, I'm good. I'm marching off into the wild unknown, but I am aligned. Uh, I am supported. I am loved and I have have love to give to others. Just feeling like, like a rock star. <laughs> um, and you really were going out into the world with this Knight of Pentacles. I think so your journey might have been a little slow, but I think you were bringing a stability, bringing the stability that you had within yourself. You've been bringing it out to others. You've been cultivating something and a little bit like you guys have been the eye in the eye of the storm, but not so much that you've been in it, although it might be that, but almost that you guys are like holding the eye of the storm ener energy. Maybe people around you have been, you know, panic shopping and freaking out or having, you know, panic attacks, lots of anxiety, sleepless nights. And you've been a little bit like the voice of reason. I feel like you guys have a lot of perspective and you've been able to calm down the people around you and to just be, be you've been somebody's rock. And this eight of cups is, I think, the linchpin of your equinox. The eight of cups is such an awesome card to get on the equinox because it, it's, it's the spiritual journey card. It is your 40 nights in the wilderness. And it's beautiful to get to the, to get with the fool and the lovers. This equinox, possibly on the day of, but of course, you know, these kind of energies bleed and it's not all just going to be happening on one day, but you're going to be receiving some kind of activations from, you know, interdimensionals, higher dimensions, your higher self, deities. I feel like this it's something you've been waiting for, something you've been hoping for. Maybe all year you've been thinking, when is this, when is this going to come? When am I going to evolve? When am I going to reach the next step? You've been waiting for something, you've been looking for it. Um, and I think you've been you've been heading towards it. You've been steadily, steadily on your journey. And now you're finally getting to the point where you like it's going to be happening. When I say that, whatever just came to mind, it's going to be happening. That's what it is. You're finally at that point where you've reached a stage of spiritual maturity. Enough that you can go out and receive what you've been getting or what you've been what you've been looking for, what you deserve. And after that, guys, it's like nothing but good news. You got the emperor and the queen of cups. Beautiful marriage of masculine and feminine energy coming back to the lovers. You guys are so aligned, so entwined. I feel like both with, with yourself and with some kind of soulmate figure. It's funny for you guys. I feel like you are so, so aligned, so solid, so ready for the next step in your spiritual evolution, the evolution of your consciousness that 
there isn't even really that much to say here. All I can really say is that for you, the significance of the equinox will be the next step, the next phase in your, in your evolution, in your growth, in your journey. You might have to go out and get it. That's the only like caveat here with this eight of cups. You might have to look for it. You might have to ask for it. This doesn't necessarily have to be going anywhere. Um, especially because most of us can't really go anywhere right now, but, uh, it can be, um, shit. I just, uh, heard astral travel. If you guys have been trying to travel astrally to have out of body experiences, or even to just imagine, like go on shamanic journeys, you know, travel inside your imagination. Um, that could have something to do with it. You guys might want to look up, uh, you know, shamanic drumming on YouTube. You can, you know, put on a 20 minute track and just sit down and ask to be taken on a journey and just follow where your imagination takes you. You don't need to, and don't get hung up going, Oh, I'm just imagining this. Well, so what? Just, just imagine it, just go for the ride and see where it takes you. That's it. Um, yeah. Shamanic journeying could be to me. That's really what this is about. Shamanic journeying. Um, but again, it could be any kind of astral travel. You could be traveling astrally in your sleep and not knowing it. Or just doing some really interesting visualization work. I think those are the kind of things, if you want to get the most out of this like boosting process, I feel like this equinox energy is going to be giving everybody a boost and an upgrade and a, and a little bit of a reset. So if you want to capitalize on that, follow your intuition, follow your, your guidance and just your passion and your interest, follow that and try something a little bit new. Um, you know, a spiritual practice that you haven't really done before, but make sure it's something that's calling to you, right? Like don't take anybody else's advice. Don't, uh, don't let anybody convince you that you need to do this or you need to do that. You know, a lot of the time we tend to think like, you know, you have to meditate in order to evolve your consciousness, consciousness, you know, you need to meditate in order to ascend. Well, no, because evolving your consciousness is not about any one technique, right? Techniques are useful. They're interesting. They're whatever they are. They're very, very useful. They can be very useful. Like I swear by meditation, it's been like the biggest, most important thing I've ever learned. Right. But not everybody needs to meditate in order to be spiritually advanced or to evolve their consciousness. That's, that's, that's a lie because <laughs> Evolving your consciousness is about your energy, about your openness, and just about your intention, about how you connect with transcendent energies. And you don't need to meditate to do that. Don't let anybody tell you that you need to. So yeah, it's not about the technique. The technique is just, that's just a skill. It's just a physical technique that we learn here on earth. That's not important. So follow your passion, follow your interests, do what resonates with you. If you can, if you're like stuck at home, sitting around in the equinox, that would be a great day to try it. Um, whatever tech, whatever technique you're thinking of, try that on the equinox or whenever after. Again, don't take my advice. You guys don't need it. Follow, follow your intuition. You guys know what you need to do. And it's so coming because <laughs> the emperor and the queen of cups. And I mean, I can't help. This is your internal alignment of your masculine and feminine energies because one of the initiations we need to pass as we go on our spiritual journey, as we evolve our consciousness is to reconcile any conflicts between the masculine and the feminine. So you guys have done that, done that. And I think you're going to be particularly like refining that in the near future, you're going to be becoming even more balanced, but also here, like the full lovers, emperor cups queen of cups that this is such like a twin flame energy so <laughs> i mean congratulations um i would if you guys haven't met your twin flame yet or your, your soulmate your soul family however your whatever way you're looking for it if you haven't met them yet they're on their way because you have reached the point in your evolution that you're ready for them. You're so ready for them and they're ready for you. And like, it's on its way guys. And that's really <laughs> all I have to say here. You're, you guys are so like, you're so, you're so ready that it kind of like simplifies the spread. <laughs> um, I am, I am going to pull two Lenormand. I don't even know how to pronounce it. They're these, uh, these little cards. Um, they do actually match these, but it's a different type of, uh, deck used in cardomancy 
Yeah, it, it's got a French name that I can't pronounce. Lenormand? Lenormand? Sorry, guys. Um, for any of you French speakers, I just butchered it. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to pull two of them. They're read in pairs, and I'm still learning how to read them. And they're supposed to give you practical guidance, information about practical matters, not so much transcendent matters. So since it goes with this deck and this spread, um, this like cloth, we're just going to see what we get here. Way. And stork. Okay, so this way card is a picture of a path. It's a road. Um, the card is also called in other decks the crossroads. And the stork over here, of course, we think of, you know, storks bringing babies. <laughs> I don't know why that's a thing or how that got started. But the stork in this deck symbolizes uh, transitions, new beginnings, stuff like that. So you guys are, you're at a crossroads and you're going to be finding a new way, a new path. That is how these cards are read. This is like the subject and this is the modifier. You read them like syntactically. So literally you're at a crossroads of a new path. You ha you're having going to be experiencing a new way, <laughs> um, which on top of the eight of cups that I think is a little bit of confirmation on what I was saying about trying some kind of new, new technique, some new practice, try a new way of doing things. That's literally what these two little cards said, totally confirming <laughs> what I had felt earlier. So there you go. That's really the only piece of advice for you guys. Try something new, uh, a new way to advance your spirituality around the time of this March equinox or whenever you're seeing this, if you're viewing this later. And I think that's it for you guys. Congratulations on your like alignment and stability. Hope to see you guys again soon. Hey, pile two, welcome to your reading. You guys have one of the oddest spreads I have ever seen because you have three pages all in a row. I. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> you've got the Page of Swords, Page of Cups, and the Page of Wands. Very interesting. You guys are obviously at some kind of new beginning in like a huge, in a huge way in like all areas of your life. Interestingly, the Page of Pentacles is not here. So maybe the only thing the same is your physical environment. It would make sense that for this to pop up that maybe your physical environment has remained relatively stable. Maybe that's your only sh firm footing, but everything else about you has been like rapidly, rapidly evolving to the point where you feel like you've almost been like born again, uh, not in like a born again Christian kind of way, but just in like a you're a whole new you and you are like heading out into the world all fresh faced and full of hope and excitement, but also nervousness because with this many pages, you guys are feeling, you don't feel like you have a lot of experience. You don't feel like you have a lot of expertise. You know, you probably feeling a little bit unprepared or you are naive about something and you're, and you, you don't know it and that's okay. You know, <laughs> Like we're all, we all start off young and naive and we all learn through experience and, you know, you can't hold that against somebody just for being young. And if you're starting on a new project, like maybe you guys are, for example, Page of Swords, that reminds me of like somebody who's just starting university and they might think, oh, this is going to be easy or, oh, I know everything. But of course, by the time you graduate university, you, all you know is that you know nothing, right? You're so much less confident in your knowledge by the time you graduate, even though you're so much smarter than you were. <laughs> Page of Cups makes me think of somebody starting a new relationship or starting a new relationship with their own emotions and really kind of being, oh, you know, I can just love everything or I really love this person and it's going to be great. And then, you know, you're not thinking about all of the, uh, you know, nuances and difficulties. Page of Wands, somebody starting a new creative project, like 
maybe you always wanted to paint, but you're like a terrible, terrible painter. But now you're like, you know, fuck it. I'm going to paint anyway. You know, and so you're painting away and you have no idea what you're doing. But maybe your like ignorance about the te like techniques of painting actually like is a hidden benefit here because you can create something entirely new and without like all the baggage of tradition. Yeah, you guys are busting away from tradition in like a huge way. <laughs> all of these pages, you're just so, so fresh and so clean, guys. <laughs> um, it's it's just, it's so interesting. Uh, I would love to know what's going on with you guys. Anybody getting this spread? Uh, please leave me a comment and tell me like what these three pages mean to you. Why you think you got three pages? I've never seen anybody get three pages, especially with just five cards. So, um, yeah, this Equinox is like a, a new beginning for you guys in like a massive way, like more so than than everybody else, especially we got the star here. The star, I always, I with the star, it's, to me, it's like inextricably linked with the tower. But of course, with the star, the tower moment is over. You've landed on the ground, you know, she and look at her. She's also naked. She has nothing, right? But she's like, I don't need anything. I can like live off the land, right? I've landed after this crisis, I've landed in this, you know, stream of pure water that I can drink out of, you know, the stars are watching over me. Um, I have the wisdom that I need. She's just going to, you know, use what she has and it's going to be enough. And it's the star is also always with healing and starting new. So this is like another another page almost. Yeah. Wow. And I just keep thinking about, you know, the equinox means we're moving into Aries season, which for me, I just, I just keep vibing on this about how we're just all going to be coming into our bodies, like in, in a good way. Like those of us who have been really like head in the clouds, like unable to get grounded, we're going to be able to ground in a good, good way. And that's going to allow us to bring transcendent energies down to earth, which is exactly what the star is like. To me, this woman is like a, a shooting star. She's like a fallen star. She hits the ground. She's literally come down from the heavens, from higher dimensions, from wherever. And now she's down on earth and she's brought all the knowledge and wisdom and the energy and the frequency of higher planes down to earth. Yeah, you guys are like grounding transcendent energies in like a major way. And it is like getting giving you guys a whole new reset. This... Yeah, Aries season for you guys is is just like a major reset. And with the star, I feel like that's what you're going to be doing for the collective. You're holding this energy of rebirth and reset and like do over. Even if you don't do anything for anybody physically, because with all of these pages, you're probably not really in a, in a position to be helping people, you know, financially or in some kind of major cause. But that doesn't matter. You're helping everybody energetically by holding this frequency of knowing that you're safe, knowing that you have enough and being able to just forge ahead into the great unknown and to download cosmic energies down to the earth. Um, so we end here with the five of wands, which is always that, you know, conflict and fighting energy. But when I first saw this, I didn't really feel like this was conflict around you. I felt like you were almost picking up the sword, like, or, you know, these wands, but yeah, in this spread to me, you are, you're going to be fighting for something with all of this innocence behind you. Um, it makes me think of almost like, like college activists, right? <laughs> uh, a little bit, a little bit naive, a little bit not entirely sure uh, about the repercussions of all of their actions or a little bit unsure about all the nuances of these situations that they're, you know, being a social justice warrior about, but, you know, they're really, really working for good. Um, they have all the good intentions and they're willing to channel an immense amount of energy into increasing the common good. So you guys, I think that's, to me, that's what this is about. You're picking up, you're picking up the staff and you're fighting for what you believe in. The only caution here is to not go too overboard with it. And since you have all of this like innocent energy, just understand that there are complexities and nuances beyond what is immediately obvious. 
Just think about how when you were younger, you might have thought that something was really simple and straightforward and you thought the answer was really obvious. And then, of course, you grow up and you realize that, well, that was way more complicated than I thought. And, you know, maybe I was wrong to have done it that way. Maybe I should have considered all these other factors. Maybe I should have taken a more moderate approach. So just be careful not to charge too headlong. Be moderate and be considerate of all the variables. But, yeah, you guys are majorly downloading transcendent energies, grounding them into the earth, bringing them here for the collective. And you guys are really going to be helping a lot of people energetically, I think. And I'd like to pull two of these little Lenormand cards. They're red in pairs. I'm going to pull just two and we'll see what they have to say. These are supposed to help with, like, practical matters. That's what this deck is all about. So let's see. Stars. Wow, guys. <laughs> the star and stars. Okay, cool. And now we need... So that's the subject. Now we need the modifier. That's how these are read. And fish. Okay, so this your subject here, the stars card, is all about spirituality, dreams, inspiration, and imagination. And the fish card is basically about abundance. So <laughs> you guys are basically bringing a dream of abundance, a dream of equality and like fair play and sharing where everybody has enough. Everybody has what they need. That is your dream. And I mean like so synchronous with this star card i feel like you guys are like bringing the dream down from higher dimensions from other worlds from other realms you're bringing it down from the cosmos exactly what i was saying earlier and you want to spread the abundance for people you're going to be fighting for this you're going to be fighting to make sure everybody has what they need and that they don't forget to dream they don't forget to dream they don't forget to be inspired and you're going to be inspiring people to be to be dreamers to be imaginative and to be spiritual. That's beautiful, guys. And I think your all of these pages, your innocence is really going to help you with this. It, like there's such like a childlike sense of glee and wonder here. As if like you just came here and everything is so exciting and beautiful. Yeah, you guys aren't aren't uh too bothered by everything going on because you guys have a like a, you're so spiritually oriented that you're just focusing on that. You're not too worried about events in the physical plane, which is really good to see because that uh, is really energetically important for the rest of us. It holds that frequency for us and helps. It'll help everybody, even if they don't know it, it'll help them tone down their anxiety. So guys, like <laughs> just, I don't know, shine on. You guys are the star. You're bringing the stars down to earth. Keep it up, guys. I hope to see you again soon. Okay, pile three, welcome to your reading. You guys are experiencing the security threatening energies. Like that is your significant issue that you're going through, this equinox. I actually expected to get a lot more of this type of energy uh, in the other two piles, but those people were so like head in the clouds, focusing on their spiritual development that they weren't really too bothered by all of these earthly problems, but you guys are feeling it. And I don't mean to imply that that means you're less spiritual or less evolved or anything like that. It just means that you guys are going through a security threatening energy, situation, feelings, all of that. And with good reason, because you guys have been on top of the world. You got the king of pentacles and the nine of pentacles to start you off. That's been your like your recent past energy. So you guys have been doing really well, feeling all abundant, feeling like, you know, maybe finally you just gotten your shit together. Finally, you just got that good job. Finally, you just moved. Finally, like your life was all coming together and you were just feeling so good. And then this moon card, suddenly out of nowhere, all of the shit hits the fan and you're left kind of like, like, how did this happen? What is real? What isn't real? Maybe you're caught up in, you know, all of the different theories of 
what's going on right now and what the basis of it is and what the bigger picture is. You're confused about what's happening, why it's happening, how it's happening. And you're kind of left with this feeling like, why is this happening to me now? I literally just got my shit together. Everything was going so well. Are you kidding me? How can it be like backpedaling? Um, and that is also the other thing here. You, besides this just general sense of your security being threatened, is this like frustration with two steps forward, one step back. Maybe it feels like one step forward, two steps back. Um, and funny when I, right when I went to record your reading, Initially, somebody started uh, like the maintenance people at my complex started mowing the lawn down there and a big ride of lawnmower was really loud. So I had to stop and wait to be able to film your video. And of course, I was irritated because I wanted to get this. I wanted to do this. I was ready to do it. And I was all good to go. I'm going to do pile three and then bam, horrible noise. And I had to go uh, wait, I had to go do something else and wait. And I think that is really representative of what you guys are feeling right now. You don't wanna to have to wait. You had plans, you had shit to do. You, you had your life to live, everything was going good. And then suddenly like now everything has been, the like the universe put the brakes on you, you're frustrated. And you know, I really feel like you guys could have had travel plans. You had to delay, you know, working on some kind of project or career. Now that's all put on hold. And even like, you know, with the King of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, and over here, the Four of Pentacles, we have to talk about finances. Maybe you guys are financially stable for the first times in your lives. Maybe you'd just finally been able to make some investments. And then, of course, you know, the economy went tits up and you're like, are you serious? Like, <laughs> how could this be happening? I just got it together. I know I'm repeating myself, but like, that's, that is such, so pervasive for me here. There's a call for you guys to use your your grounded nature. And when I say grounded, I never mean like a lot of spiritual people almost use grounded as almost like bad, almost as if it's like the opposite of transcendent, the opposite of spiritual. That's not it. That's not it at all. It's just that you guys know the value of living your day-to-day -day lives and infusing it with your spirituality. You know, we didn't come here to be ascetics. Certainly I didn't. We should be able to live, to evolve our consciousness and to have our spiritual journey while still living an abundant physical life. You know, we get to have our cake and eat it too. That's, I really, I really, really believe that and I live it. And I think you guys, you guys get it. You guys aren't here to be ascetics. You guys are here to have it all because you, you understand that you can ground your spiritual energy, the cosmic energies into your physical life, and you can live abundantly in a spiritual way, which is awesome. I love that. I totally agree. <laughs> um, this moon card in the middle, this is, I think, the major energy for the actual like moment of the equinox for you guys. You guys are going through a moment of illusions, of confusion, and feeling like you don't know which way is up, and you don't know which way is is real. Like imagine if you're looking into a lake, seeing the sky and the mountains and the trees reflected in a lake and the reflection is so clear that it, you almost don't know <laughs> which one is real and which one is the illusion. Or like you're looking at yourself in a mirror and there's a mirror behind you and you see yourself reflected, you know, back and forth and back and forth, like on and on to infinity. And you almost lose the sense of which, like, <laughs> which one is the real you. There's so many of you reflected it. which one which one is real. But luckily for you guys, this is a temporary energy. After the moon, after this moment of the equinox, you guys have the world card. So everything's going to be writing itself. Everything is going to be coming full circle. Everything's going to be the way it's supposed to be. Um, it's it's gonna be okay, guys. <laughs> That's you're you're gonna be regaining your balance. You know, you're still gonna be the king of pentacles. You're still gonna have everything you need. You're still gonna be able to live your abundance. And I think it's gonna be reset into like a new way. Maybe things aren't going to be exactly the way they were before, or maybe not the way you wanted, but they're gonna be the way they're supposed to be. It's going to be good. It's going to be right. Um, and ending with this four of pentacles. To me, this signals that you're going to have enough, you know, physically, financially, all of that. You know, you're going to have enough toilet paper. <laughs> you're going to have enough food. You're going to have enough money. It's going to be okay. But, you, you know, 
you're going to have to be careful with it. This is this the four of pentacles to me is saying you're going to have enough. You're going to be fine. You're just not going to have excess, you know. So if you were thinking of, you know, getting ahead on your bills or making some investments or stockpiling toilet paper, um, you're not going to have that extra. But that's fine. You don't need it. Right. Other people need it. Actually, you have enough and other people are worse off. And, you know, you're going to be you're going to be OK with what you got. OK, I'm just going to pull some Le Nomonde, if that's how you pronounce it, cards. Pull two of these, they're red in pairs, and they give us like practical, like indications about what's going on in our practical physical life. So let's see. Ship, all about new ventures and new beginnings. And let's find the modifier. Tree, knowledge, wisdom, and life. Wow, yeah, you guys are going to be journeying on to a new life, uh, <laughs> a new branch of knowledge that, that is so synchronous with the world here. Yeah, by the, guys, by the time you guys come through this um, illusory and confusing time over the equinox, you're going to be sailing to new shores and finding a new world. Wow, that really like sums up <laughs> uh, what is happening for all of us, for the whole planet right now. Energetically, we're all taking a step back. We're all taking a sit down, a restock, and we're going to be resetting and coming out into a new a new world when the equinox uh, passes by and we pass into Aries season. Yeah, you guys are really embodying this uh, physical reset energy. So, I mean, luckily for you guys, you don't have the tower card in here. You don't have any like big bad news cards. So whatever is making you feel threatened or in whatever areas of your life you feel threatened or insecure, know that like it's not going to be anywhere near as bad as you think. This isn't like a massive overhaul. This isn't a tower moment. This isn't everything going to shit. This is like a time of a confusion and restructuring, but it's not like the apocalypse. <laughs> So ride it out as best you can, guys. And I know you will because, you know, you've got the world here. Everything's going to be reset and you're going to be coming into your new world. And you're going to be having new, new knowledge because of it. I think that's also the, the lesson here, why you're going through all, all of this, why we're all going through all of this. There's going to be lessons to learn, to, to be learned here. Both internally, just by being isolated and being forced to look within. Also, just on a global scale, lots of lessons to be learned here, guys. Um, but what exactly those are, um, we'll be finding out uh, as the months go by. So good luck, guys. I hope to see you again soon.